Hello, this is Ryan. Welcome to my tutorial video. Today I'm going to take you through the process of making a note block machine in Minecraft. I'll be creating a note block version of the theme song from the old Froggy show. This song was used in the introduction of my video, Old Froggy and the Magic Flute. This is what the song looks like in Logic. There are five instrument tracks and three vocal tracks. I am using this logic project to create a notated score. I usually use a notated score as a sort of blueprint for all the note blocks I'll need in my machine, one for every note in the score. I have exported the music from logic as a MIDI file and opened it up in Sibelius. The score is a bit messy, straight out of the MIDI file. Also, the chroma arp track, um, you can see has whole note chords, the lowest chord being an F major chord. This part uses an arpeggiator, so I'll need to renotate that to match the notes the synth arpeggiator is playing. After cleaning everything up, adding the arpeggiator notes, and getting the drum part notated correctly, here's my score. I've renamed the instruments based on what Minecraft instrument I plan on using, though that may change, and I added the vocal parts. I have also transposed the music up a half step from the original version. I'll explain why in a moment. Also, I added an additional track here called Packed Ice to double the flute and glowstone track, which is the main melody, uh, just to give it some extra emphasis. Doubling things by having different instruments play the same notes is how you can orchestrate your note block music. Now that I have the score all set up, I'm ready to start building. But first, I'd like to give a brief explanation of how note blocks actually work. To get us started, I added some numbers below the notes in the gold track. Those numbers correspond to how many times you must use the note block to tune it to that note. Here is a chart showing the entire range of a note block. I have the note names and the number of times you use the note block to tune it to each pitch. Note blocks always use this two octave range of pitches. However, some Minecraft instruments will transpose the sounding pitches to higher or lower octaves. Also, the percussion sounds don't have exact pitches, but they could still be tuned across this range to make them sound higher or lower. Maybe now you could see why I transposed the original music up a half step. In the original piece, the lowest note in a lot of the parts was F, the lowest chord being F major. But the lowest note on a note block is F sharp, or G flat. By transposing the original up a half step, all of the notes in each part will fit nicely into the range of the note block. So my lowest chord is going from F major to G flat major. There are a lot of possible designs for a note block machine. Here I'm setting up the platform, and each row will have one of the tracks of music. With this layout, it's possible to have three note blocks play at the same time, because you could place a note block on either side of the center note block, as we'll see. I don't expect to need three notes at a time on every track, but I'll leave space for them anyways, just in case. I have eight rows here, six for the instruments and two for the vocals. I'm using two for the vocals because I plan on doubling the vocal parts with different instruments to give them more punch. Here I'm setting up the starting redstone pulse that'll start the machine. Um, I'm using an observer to trigger the redstone pulse. I'm going to be placing a repeater at the start of every row, uh, but the initial redstone won't reach all of the rows, so I need to add a repeater. I'm going to set it to one tick to extend the first row. All of the rows before this extender repeater will need two ticks, and all the rows after it will need one tick uh, so that they all have two ticks to start at the same time. Now I can build out the row for the first instrument track, which will be the gold instrument. This track uh, is all 16th notes. I'm going to make the length of the row one bar. So I will need 16 gold blocks to make all of the notes in the first bar. I'm going to leave one space in between each gold block to place the repeater. 
Since these will be 16th notes, I only need one repeater between each gold block, because I'll be using one repeater tick per 16th note. So an eighth note will have two repeater ticks, and a quarter note will have four repeater ticks. For notes longer than a quarter note, I will need more than one repeater in between the note blocks. At the end of the row, I go up three blocks and carry the row back in the opposite direction for the second bar. If you carry your rows much farther than I've done here, there could be issues uh, with the note blocks getting too far away so that you can't hear them when you're standing at the front of the machine, so be aware of that. This part of the build can go pretty quickly, carrying the rows back and forth and placing the correct number of gold blocks. I like to put signs with the bar numbers on the side of the rows as I go along. This helps me keep track of where I am in the music and is especially helpful for finding any mistakes uh, in the note block tunings that might pop up later. I put bar number signs even when the layout is obvious, like it is here, since each row level equals one bar. I think you get the idea of what I'm doing now, so why don't I speed things up uh, for this part of the build. Okay, now I have the layout uh, for each note block in the first track. It goes up eight levels high, because there are eight bars in the music. The next step is to add repeaters, uh, set to one tick, in between each gold block, and to add the redstone dust on the ends to connect the levels together. Okay, so you could see it's pretty straightforward. I think I can speed things up again. I'm going to slow it back down just so you could see connecting the levels with the redstone dust. Now I can start tuning the note blocks. I'm going to use those numbers I showed you in the score below the gold track. I must use the note block nine times for the first note. I can right click the note block nine times, or I can hold down the right click button and lift off when I get to nine. It takes some practice to get the timing right, but after a while you can count the half steps pretty easily. You can double check the tuning by pressing F3 and looking at the right side of the display. When you look at a note block, you will see what number that note block is tuned to. The first four notes are tuned, now it's time to push ahead and tune the rest of them. It can look like a daunting task, but if you get good at holding down the right click and lifting at the right number, the process can go pretty quickly. I only count up to 12, then I start over. For example, middle C would be the number 6, so to tune the C an octave higher, I would use the note block up to 12, and then add another 6 to get to C. 12 plus 6 is easier to count and to hear while you're holding down the right click, I think, than going up to 18. Plus, you only have to memorize the numbers in the first octave, and for the octave above, you just use all the same numbers plus 12. I'll just speed this up here to get to the end of the second bar so I can test everything, make sure everything's working. Everything seems fine, so I'm going to go ahead and tune the rest of this track and uh, we'll jump ahead to getting finished with that. Okay, finished tuning all of the rest of track one. Now I'm going to test it, see how it sounds. Sounds good. Time to start track two. So now I just keep going. Track two and track three are both um, all 16th notes. They're going to lay out pretty, pretty similar to track one. And when I get to the other tracks, I'll have to do some other things uh, with the rhythm. 
So I'm going to jump ahead to get through track two and three very quickly, and uh, then I'll show you some new things on track four. Okay, everything's fine. Um, I'm not loving the bone block instrument. I'm going to change that later using a fill and replace command, but I'll just leave it for now so we could keep building. With the packed ice track, I'd like to show a couple new things. Because of the long rests in this part, we have to be careful to leave enough room for the repeaters. Each note, each 16th note, gets one repeater. And the half rest at the end of the first bar is equal to two quarter notes, which is equal to two repeaters, both of them set to four ticks. So in the first bar, I will have eight one tick repeaters following each instrument block, note block, followed directly by two four tick repeaters to fill in the space of that half rest. And the other bars following will kind of follow the same pattern. Also, this track has two notes playing at the same time. This is really easy to do. I just need to put another packed ice block beside the first packed ice block. Note blocks will always sound any other note block that they are touching on its on the side. In this design, I could have three notes per track because there is room to have a note block on either side of the center note block that's carrying the redstone. It should be mentioned, and almost goes without saying, that though I can have three notes per track, uh, all of these three notes will play together in the same rhythm because there's only one row of repeaters giving us the rhythm. Jumping ahead to completing this track, and we can test it. I realize I should have called this track Clay and Glowstone, because Clay is the block that gives you the flute instrument. I'm going to use Clay for both of the notes in the track, and I will use Glowstone for just the top note. Our rhythm is eighth notes here. Each eighth note equals two repeater ticks. Then I need two more four tick repeaters for the quarter rest at the end of the first bar. And a word about doubling. Doubling is used in orchestral music all the time to blend different combinations of, of colors uh, when two different instruments are playing the same part together. I use it the same way in my note block machines. Doubling the same note with different instruments will make those notes louder and give them a different color. Also, the clay instrument sounds an octave higher than the glowstone instrument, so not only are we doubling the pitch, we're doubling it at the octave, giving that top note even more reinforcement, kind of like having a flute play an octave higher than an oboe, for example. It may not occur to you that you're hearing two different instruments one octave apart, but you will notice a richer color for those notes where those different instruments are playing together. I'm going to jump ahead to uh, hearing what this all sounds like when it's done. Now it's time to set up the drum track. This track will use three different instruments, kick drum, snare drum, and hi-hat. There is no tom-tom instrument, so I will use the kick drum instrument tuned higher to play the tom-tom notes that were in the original drum part. One new thing to remember is the snare drum instrument is created with sand, gravel, or concrete powder. So I'll need to place a block below the concrete powder to hold it up, otherwise it will fall. For this reason, I will give an extra block of height for my rows to allow enough room to hold up the concrete powder. 
so I don't have to worry about blocking the top of a note block um, on the row below. You'll see as we get uh, the snare drum instrument um, put in here. For the hi-hat instrument, I'm going to use sea lanterns, but you could also use glass. The kick drum will be red terracotta, and the snare is the lime concrete powder. So now I've got a kick drum note, followed by uh, enough room for a quarter rest and an eighth rest, and the hi-hat note. And here I'm setting, getting ready for my um, five snare drum notes at the end of this first bar. And so this is what I was talking about, where you have to have a block below to hold the concrete powder. Then I just have to go in between with the redstone repeaters and get the rhythm right. So we got a quarter note, an eighth note, or eighth rest, sorry, there's an eighth note, and a quarter note, and four sixteenth notes. So uh, it's pretty simple, and I'll just keep going bar by bar, keeping track of which instrument I need and how much room I need between them for the redstone repeaters. So there's a quarter note for that snare drum, quarter rest. Now here are the two toms, which I'm going to be emulating, so to speak, with the kick drum. Those are quarter notes. Uh, getting into bar three, we have another tom note uh, for a quarter note, and so on. And I'll jump ahead now to get the percussion part all finished. I'm not going to get into too much detail about what notes I actually tuned the note blocks to for these. Um, I just want to point out that when there's repeating patterns, um, it's sometimes easier for me to uh, just get the notes from those patterns. So on the downbeat of certain bars, there's a kick drum. So I'm just going to go and get those first. In the middle of some of the bars, there's a single hi-hat attack. I'm going to go and get those next. Um, if there's a bunch of notes in a row, like the snare drum ones, sometimes it sounds fine to keep them all at the same pitch, but you can make other patterns too. Maybe use a lower note for the quarter note and a higher pitch note for the sixteenth notes. There's a lot of variation of what you could do with the percussion sounds, um, but I do encourage you to uh, not just leave them all set to zero. You should tune them to something so that a little variety can help bring some more life to the music so it doesn't sound quite so robotic as it, as it might if you don't tune any of them. Especially for the hi-hats here, uh, when you have a lot of them in a row, it can make some nice colors to make different patterns of, of, of tuning um, so that instead of just hearing one color of hi-hats, you hear a variety of colors, again, to give some life to the music. So as I was finishing this drum track, I decided that I needed to make it a little heavier, a little louder, uh, to kind of get into the same spirit as the original piece where the drum set's pretty loud. So I've gone and doubled some of the notes, some of the kick drum notes, some of the hi-hat notes. I'm experimenting with the tuning on them to try to make them louder and a little brighter. So I'll tune these hi-hat notes an octave higher than the ones that they're all, were already there. And hopefully that will give my drum track um, a little more punch. Okay, finally we're coming to the last track, or two tracks, which are duplicates of each other. They're going to be doubled. And I'm just going to use the notes from the vocal part uh, there's three voices, so there's three notes, and I'm going to use different instruments. I think I'm going to use a wool instrument and a banjo, the uh, hay instrument. The wool is like a guitar, and it sounds an octave lower, so now I'll have the voices sounding an octave lower. Luckily, there aren't too many notes on these tracks, but there's a lot of rest, so I have to count them carefully. So I finished doing the first vocal track and now I'm just finishing the second vocal track. Remember they're they're doubling each other so the layout is the exact same, all of the redstones the same. The only thing that's different is the instruments. This is the wool instrument that's going to sound an octave lower 
than the hay instrument, which is the banjo sound. Okay, everything seems just about done. There's a couple other little things I just want to show you before, before we're finished here. I added a start lever for the observer, and I moved it to the other side. I figured it was nicer to be standing on the side that has the main melody when you start the machine. I don't know, just kind of felt better that way. So I had to adjust the, the initial uh, ticks on these initial repeaters, but it wasn't a big deal. Another thing I want to try before I stop here is to uh, change the bone blocks. I'm going to um, use the fill and replace command. I'm looking facing east towards positive x, so I need to have positive x. I'll just do, I don't know, 60 is fine. I have to go up. Uh, I'll do 40. It doesn't matter because I'm only replacing the bone blocks. I'm not touching any of the other blocks that are there. The amethyst block is the default instrument, kind of like dirt. Uh, but it's nicer looking than dirt, so I'm just going to see what that sounds like. This was the pump organ track, and I feel like that counter melody from the pump organ needs a little more sustaining tone to it to kind of cut through the percussive texture. Okay, um, I do like that better. I like hearing more of the pitch, but I think ultimately clay is going to work best. So I'm just going to run this command again. I'm going to fill positive X and positive Y only uh, with clay. And I'm going to replace the amethyst blocks that are there now. I think I like that. I think that's better. Even though they're 16th notes, it almost sounds like a sustained tone using that flute sound. The last thing I want to show you is the target tick rate command. You can change the tick rate of the game. To, and that will change how fast the redstone works. So I'm going to make the tick rate 15. 20 is the default. 15 is going to make it sound a little slower. So that speed, that tempo is a little closer to the original version. Now just for fun, I'll show you what happens if you speed up the tick rate. So that's a little fast and silly. Um, I'm going to go put the tick rate back to 20 and we'll listen to the whole thing one more time at the default tempo. I think it sounds great. This will conclude my Noteblock Machine tutorial. I hope it was informative and that you were able to learn some tips and techniques so that you can have fun building your own Noteblock machines in Minecraft. Thank you for watching. Gotta go now. Bye.